Hi, hi everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to our industrial webinar series brought to you by Segi Group of Colleges. My name is Pearl and I will be your moderator today. Okay, so how is everyone doing? Is everyone doing okay? Hi guys, I see a lot of comments coming in. Thank you for tuning in with us. And as you can see in all the chat boxes um, that you can see, we have registration link. Okay, so please register yourself and um, yeah, and wait for it because it's useful for your lucky draw later on. Okay, so welcome to our talks today. So we are very, very honored to be able to invite the co-founder of Your Good Malaysia, Miss Junita E, to be here with us today. She'll be sharing more about Your Good and more about her experiences and journey in building out the company. But before that, Please allow me to do a sound check, okay? So if you can hear me loud and clear and you can see me clearly, can you just drop in the comment box and let me know? Okay, so type a yes and let me know. And while waiting for your responses, just let me share with you. You are live on both Facebook and YouTube of both colleges, um, on all the colleges. So which are Sagi College Kuala Lumpur, Subang Jaya, Penang and Sarawak. Okay, if you find your video a bit laggy, try to consider other alternative platforms, yeah? Okay, just look at your responses. Thank you all for coming in. Oh, wow, okay, I will see a lot of responses. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah, and guys, we love interaction. So please, throughout the session, interact with us. Put down what you think. It could be questions or your thoughts or um, if you find something that you can agree, cannot agree more, share with us. Okay, yep, so more, okay, well, thank you for your responses, guys. Okay, now, evening again, thank you for coming in for the talk. Our talk today is um, divided into three parts. First part, we will have our speaker share with us more about Your Good Malaysia, how it is founded and her experiences on the obstacles that she faced okay, when she's um, building up the company, and then we have, we'll have a half-time break. When we come back, we have part two. So part two, we're doing, um, she'll be sharing with us more about um, how the company is doing with the impact brought by the pandemic, and a little bit more about future of Your Good Malaysia. And then third part, we will have lucky draw and Q&A session. So We'll be going out three sets of your good products that you see here. <laughs> three sets of your good products, uh, which each set's worth about 80 ringgit. So a little note for everyone, right? So we have to be present and be able to comment, I am the winner, okay, at the end of the session when your name pops up in order to claim your prize. So stay together with us, yeah? Okay. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge a few of our special guests that who are with us here today. They are the sponsors and our partners. Um, right, let's give a very warm welcome to Elbeck from Illegia Malaysia. And then very warm welcome to Ivy, Focus Point, and welcome Jeanette and Kastrid from Shore Malaysia. And you see the cute Mike here, it's from sure. It's cute and professional. So it helps it to go through our webinar very smoothly. So thank you, sure. Okay, now this is our special guesses. Okay, before I move on, let me see the comments. Do I miss anything? No, oh, hi, hi, everyone. Thank you. Oh, does someone favorite breakfast is your good? That's good. <laughs> Good from here, from you guys. Okay, now, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? So put in comment, let me know, type one if you are ready. And we'll be inviting our speaker out here today. Are you ready? Now, our speaker today, she is pretty. She is um, brave. She is the co-founder of Your Good Malaysia, and she is Miss Junita E. So let's welcome her. Hi. Hi, Good evening, everyone. 
Hi, hi. Um, first and foremost, thank you very much to SEGI Group of Colleges, you know, for this invitation. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Of course, um, it's only my end here together with Pearly who will be, you know, doing the talking. But mm -hmm. I do hope to see more engagements, you know. Um, I can only say hi through voice, but feel free, you know, to drop a chat, say hello. At least I know that you guys are listening. Thank you for taking your evening, you know, just to have, uh, to tune into our session and also to listen about how Yogurt has grown from a zero to a hero product for the past um, 12 to 13 years. Yep. <laughs> right. Thank you, Junita. So guys, I have a very, very serious question for you guys. Do you guys know Yogurt? And if you know, please let us know what's your favorite before I share mine. So let us know. So while waiting, Junita, let's um, could you like briefly introduce yourself to our audience today? Okay, uh, my name is Junita E. Um, just for your info, I am 100% Chinese because of my name. It's already in my IC. Um, for my background, just a quick note. Uh, I have been in the FMCG industry since 2009. But prior to this, I was actually in IT line, not that long. Um, I was doing also related to product marketing, but on the IT industry products, you know, mainly like software, hardware, and licensing. Um, then it's where I met the actual founder of Yogurt, who was then my boyfriend, but after that got promoted to become my husband. So... Uh, we, I got to know him in 2009 and that's where we have actually sort of started building the brand of Yogurt and slowly, um, you know, we settled down, we got married, you know, and throughout this journey, this is where we have been growing um, the brand Yogurt. But for not many people know actually for Yogurt brand is actually a um, local brand. But of course, our products are all sourced overseas, mainly from Europe and also Australia. So it's actually co-owned by this company called Cheyenne Trading, which is the company that we are work I'm actually working for. So the products that I mainly handle are on branding and marketing. So Yogurt is actually one of the brands that we manage, but we also specialize in um, high-end and niche products catered to the Malaysian market where we sell to the retailers, you know, baby shops, pharmacies, depending on the suitability of the product. So um, in terms of experience in this line, I have been around, uh, you know, in this industry for about 12, yeah, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And hoping to continue learning and growing in this very fast and dynamic industry. Very challenging, very interesting, but I think that's how we, we keep things going, you see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Since we are already talking about yogurt a little bit, so why not we dive into our first question today? So a little bit more about how yogurt is founded. Okay, um, like I mentioned earlier, yog the original founder of yogurt actually started by my husband then in 2008. So it was actually started um, 2008 by my husband Jeremy Ng. I only met him in 2009. So back then, this is a little bit on a touchy story like, because it's a little bit personal because Yogurt, no matter what, is our own branding. We grew from scratch. So we started the product with a main purpose, which is to create a selection of breakfast range of products using the best premium quality ingredients that doesn't compromise on two main factors, taste and nutrition. I would say even right up to today, this is the two important factors that we make sure for every of yogurt product, we have these two combinations in. So why we thought that a good quality product, you know, it does not necessar necessarily mean that it has to be premium at a very high pricing. So we set about to produce, you know, good quality products at reasonable prices because there's no reason why good nutrition shouldn't be affordable to everyone. Just because it's healthy doesn't mean you have to pay more. Technically, nutrition or good health should be enjoyed by all equals, by everyone. So that's why we try to ensure we use good quality ingredients in all our products. Uh, we make sure our product is also frequently tested, you know, to meet international food stand, uh, safety standards. Because for the brand Yogurt, we not only sell in Malaysia. The past few years, we've actually been selling in Malaysia. But since 
2014 or 15 onwards, we have already started exporting. So you can actually see yogurt products in Singapore, in Indonesia, even after the pandemic, if you happen to go to Maldives for holiday, you will also see yogurt products there as well. Wow. So we also sell, yeah, we also sell in Vietnam. Um, currently also to a small sector, uh, Shanghai, if I'm not mistaken, in China mm. as well to focus on yogurt products. Mm. So that's why, you know, for us, um, food safety standards is crucial. And like I mentioned earlier, both taste and nutrition is something that we don't compromise. So... Mm -hmm. Yep. Then, uh, of course, um, we can go to the next slide. Okay. This is literally walking down memories, uh, yogurt's memory lane. If you can see currently those who are actually consuming our product, you will see we are very known for our pristine, the white packaging background like you can see on Pearl's, um, Pearl's desk and also my back end here. They're all <laughs> white, clear packaging. This is... What you're seeing on the screen now is actually what we started to sell at 2000, in 2008. So you can see the range of products. You see the muesli bars on the top right. You have a total of eight flavors. But of course, um, as time goes by, we feel that some flavors, you know, doesn't move that well. Some products um, doesn't really suit the market. So of course, there are times that it is like a hit and miss. And back then when we grew our product, it was not easy as well, also, which we will cover in the next sector. But for now, I will just briefly show you, this is how yogurt actually looks like, you know, and in the early days. And through certain transformation, you know, then we have finally like identified our true identity, how we want to, how should I say, standardize our design, that one look from afar, you can tell that it is actually yogurt. That's yogurt, you know, on the shelf. So as you can see here, the next slide, this is actually some of our current portfolio. This is what you are exactly seeing in today's market. Whether you go to Jaya Grocer, you go to Aeon, you know, Village Grocer or Tesco. So you can see like the range of crunchy muesli that we have. Uh, sorry, the, before that. <laughs> yep. So you can see the range of crunchy muesli here. And then you have the gourmet muesli. I think for yogurt, we are very popular for our range of muesli because we offer a variety of products different kind of flavors so it's not one flavor you eat and after you get bored then you will tend to switch to another brand but for us we try to keep things um unique keep things exciting so there's always not just a one flavor for you to go to there's always a different flavor different texture some likes to eat it instant with milk some maybe perhaps like to take it with um, milk or yogurt you know you make those overnight muesli so we try to make it interesting and a healthy option and most important, variety for consumers to enjoy a healthy range of breakfast. And next slide, please. Okay, this one, I'm pretty sure is very familiar to many students here. Even to our office staff, um, this has been a fixed staple to most uh, of our yogurt fans. And in fact, this is actually one of our best-selling product category, which is our yogurt muesli bars. These are the ones that are coated with yogurt, or you have one particular one that is actually coated with chocolate. So these are the bars, you know, that is very convenient to snack on. Um, from the very first slide that we show you, you know, the nostalgic moments, it has slowly evolved. And now we have actually branched to a subcategory called the granola bar. So granola bar is similar to muesli bar. The difference is it is not coated with yogurt. So this is more preferred towards guys. Girls, from my experience, even myself, I like a bit more chewy texture. So usually we go for the yogurt coated ones. But granola bar somehow is more liked by males, guys, because the, tex uh, the texture is slightly crunchy. Taste feels just as good as well. Next slide. Okay, this is our peanut butter. Uh, I think the one that you usually see in the market is always on the left. Uh, these are the no added sugar and salt peanut butter. And not many people know our peanut butters, our no added sugar and salt uh, for yogurt. We are actually one of the pioneers that started this concept of no added uh, salt and sugar. And in fact, our peanut butters are 100% using American peanuts. So some of 
the ones that is sold in the market, you know, there are a lot that they mentioned, you know, maybe it's like locally produced, you know, premium quality, but there are not many um, products that uses 100% American peanuts. And we are very proud to really share this to everyone that our peanut butter is truly one of a kind. Those who has eaten before will understand the quality, the, the aroma, the nutty flavor that there is in a bottle of our peanut butter. So it comes either in um, crunchy or also the smooth texture. The one on the right, you see like a superhero theme. This is a very new launch. We just launched this two months ago. This one, we call it a classic range because we want to target this mainly to the younger crowd like yourself, you know, for young working adults, college students, or maybe secondary school students. These are something that you guys will really might want to consider because the texture is slightly different. It may be added a little bit of salt and sugar, but it's not something that when you eat, it's like, wow, damn sweet, ah, wow, very salty. You still get the strong, nutty aroma of, from peanuts. And as mentioned earlier, it's also using our 100% American peanuts. Yeah, next slide. Okay, this yogurt glow range. Also from yogurt, but you see the heart that replaces the letter O is because we try to brand the Glow brand as a more premium range. Reason why premium is because um, unlike the other mueslis that we have been selling all this while, this one here is, I would say, the perfect choice for you to make overnight mueslis. I will share some pictures with you guys later, you know, in the latest slide. How you make overnight mueslis, you know, is something like you mix with milk overnight, you soak in the fridge. Even if you don't want milk, you can always replace with um, yeah, non-dairy milk such as uh, soy milk, almond milk, those who are lactose intolerant. So this one here is packed very well because it's added with chia seeds. Chia seed is actually very well known to have high in protein and uh, plant-based omega-3 content and also with oat bran. So oat bran, some people might not be familiar, it's actually... The husk of oats that has been sliced thinly, the main function, I would say the main benefit of oat bran is actually good for the heart because it produces this ingredient called beta-glucan. So this one is generally, you know, to promote good cholesterol and also to protect our heart. So we also brand it, you know, into a heart-shaped design. So you can see even in the stores, the next time when you go for your grocery shopping, you'll always see this glow range is placed side by side to make the complete heart because one box on its own is actually just half a heart. So we see that this is selling, you know, product. Not only we try to comp we don't compromise on quality, the taste. Now I would say that even packaging itself, we have to make it attractive for consumers to be really, you know, catch their eyeball. We see. Next slide, please. Okay, yogurt junior now. It's after, I would say, myself and my husband, you know, we got married, settled down, have kids, of course. Then we realized, maybe we should create something for children. So that's how we have the Yogurt Junior range. So Junior range only came out much later, maybe about 2014. Yeah, 2000, around 2014. So we started off also with like smoothie bars, um, fruit snacks for kids. So this range is primarily featuring a range of healthy kid snack. And I can say that it is definitely created by parents for parents. Because even for myself, so I find that buying snacks for, we, when we buy products for ourselves, we want, of course, healthy stuff. If it's your, for your children, like for you guys, they're all college kids, correct? Let's say you're buying for your younger nieces or for a younger sibling. You definitely want something that has no nasties, free from those artificial flavorings, you know, preservatives, coloring. So this is also our promise in every and sing every single Yogurt Junior product. These are the three main factors that we ensure that it's not added into our, you know, our Yogurt Junior range. So we can go to the next slide and we can see what are the features for, what are the range of products for Yogurt Junior. So as you can see, we have, Four different range. One is like the first one is like the fruit snack. I'll just briefly glance through. Fruit snack is actually those pastilles, slightly chewy, but there's no added sugar. So the sweetness actually comes from fruit itself. 
the fruit. So either we use like apple or blueberry or apple or strawberry to give that kind of taste. So even when you eat it, you can actually taste the real fruit itself and it's not artificial. It's not medicine taste like yok mei, gam long It's very different. It's really natural fruit taste. And then you have also the yogurt junior. Oh, there's a typo here. There's a yogurt junior smooth. Sorry, the yogurt junior smoothie bar. These are actually smoothie bars, uh, similar to our muesli bar, but they are actually smaller in size, made off of um, oat rice bubble. So it's easier for children to chew. Then you, of course, you have the third one is actually yogurt coated fruit snacks. So it can be yogurt coated um, fruit snacks that has uh, sultanas coated with yogurt or yogurt that you coat inside is with some uh, apricot uh, juices or apricot peach extract for children to snack on. So definitely all these are like something healthy for children to snack. And then last but not least, we have this yogurt junior vegetable pasta, which we just launched this, um, we launched this last month in the major supermarkets. So our pastas, as you can see for children, you can always see like there's three colors. You have the normal color and perhaps they will have spinach for the green and the red, the orange usually is carrot. But for us, we use four different types of vegetables. So there is um, the turmeric, the beetroot, the spinach, and also the carrot. So these are like, you know, good options for kids because we find kids nowadays, they don't enjoy eating vegetables. Somehow they will always pick it out. So they are always into carbohydrate or meat. So at least these are, you know, good options for parents when they are really at a loss, not too sure how to... Uh, you know, entice children to eat vegetables. This is a good way to disguise vegetables in it. I see some um, comment here from Miss Kelly here that they, she rarely sees yeah, Yogurt Junior series in the supermarket. Okay, that's because um, we, on off, we always have people commenting or PM us on Facebook like, hey, I can't find this product, you know. I think the reason because for junior range, we all, it has to be placed at the kids category, the confectionery. Confectionery means biscuit, kid snack. So you will always see uh, our yogurt junior products at the shelf. Except for the smoothie bar. Smoothie bar, because it's like muesli bar, you will always see with all our adult muesli range. But all these kids range, let's say if you cannot buy at the retailers, we have like our official Lazada or Shopee store, which you know, anytime you can actually purchase at your convenience. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, yogurt grow. This is also another subsection uh, we have under the kids range, but we have grow is because we, this is actually, I will say, our first venture into the organic category. So as usual, also like mentioned, it is also created by parents for parents and also we uphold the three main points, you know, free from artificial preservatives, flavorings and colorings. Yep, so the next slide. Okay, this is um, currently for the Grow brand, we only have these two range of products because we launched this last November and then, you know, MCO after MCO after MCO after MCO nonstop. So I would say that the awareness for the Grow brand is not, it has not reached to the impact that we want it to be. But I would say that it's definitely a category that we, that we tend to grow. These are actually organic puffs that you serve for your children. So their puffs is either, you know, on the left, you see the rabbit design. Um, you have this is with, for example, normal rice puffs together with strawberry puffs. And also on the right is actually whole grains with chocolate. So even for kids, we try to keep classic flavors, you know, strawberry and chocolate. You can't go wrong with kids, you see. So this is something that don't say children, even I myself sometimes I snack this for breakfast or, you know, or for a quick snack as well. Uh, next slide. Okay, so basically this one here is just to show you a glimpse of um, the family portrait of yogurt, I would say. So this is a mixture of yogurt, yogurt junior and yogurt grow. From where we've started, you know, in 2008, right up to ver this very day, of course, there are some hit and misses for some products that we eventually drop. But I'm happy to say that the growth the presence so far for yogurt, you know, in Malaysian market and overseas has been very, very positive, very overwhelming. We could not have grown until up to 32 types of, you know, yogurt products under our 
our yogurt umbrella. So definitely this is something that we're very proud of and we couldn't have done it even better without the support of those who has actually tried or you know have heard of our product. Yep. Right. Thank mm. you, Junita, for sharing that with us. When I hear about the junior series, then I feel like I'm children again. Why <laughs> everything feels like it hits my heart. Okay, chocolate for the favorite. Okay, um, about incorporating the vegetables into the pasta because children do pick their vegetables out. I do um, pick up my vegetables also. Wow, I feel yeah. like a children again. <laughs> children, actually. <laughs> oh, no. Health is wealth now, I would say. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, guys, I just saw a few of you sharing with me your favorite um, yogurt products and I see most of you say smoothie bars and a few of you say about the breakfast cereals. Thank you guys for sharing with me. My time to share with you, my favorite is the chocolate bar. I really like the, um, the texture of it because it's not too hard and it's not too um, soft. It's just nice for biting. The, for the chocolate and the chocolate chocolate and nut muesli bar, is it? Yeah. That's okay. the one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially muesli, Yeah, for our muesli bar actually the chocolate and nut together with our blueberry cranberry. These are our two top selling flavors in Malaysia mm. and Singapore. I say okay, yeah. it's really good. Mm. I really like the choco rice creep in the bar. That's my favorite mm. part of the bar. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you, Junita, for sharing with so much with us. Of course, from zero to hero, that must be a journey. So could you share with us a bit um, some of your obstacles that you face when you're like setting up the company? Okay, uh, perhaps we can go to the next slide. Okay, uh, I will pinpoint, you know, some challenges that we face, you know, when growing this product together with my husband in the initial period, together with the rest of my team. Uh, I would say the first point where we want to highlight is really on the lack of product awareness. So back then, you know, healthy products are not in trend unlike now. If you compare to 2008, to them, health, I mean, it's important, but it's not like now everyone is advocating, you know, on healthy eating, eat right, eat right, uh, you are what you eat, you know, that kind of taglines. So back then, you know, muesli and muesli bars were not that popular. Even now, everyone knows what muesli is, but people will always come and let us know that, um, you know, for example, let's say if I would exhibit at fast, they'll ask me, June, if I eat muesli, I just eat with milk only, is it? How, what else can I eat with, you know? So the, how to say, the awareness of the product, whether people know how to eat it, how to consume it, there's oh, actually, there's no fixed way. I've come across many, many interesting people, how they eat their muesli. Some can actually just soak it overnight, you know, they eat it as overnight muesli. Some, they pour it with milk, they eat it instantly, or you mix with yogurt as a snack, as a bite to your yogurt, because yogurt is always very smooth and creamy. There are even people who actually use, you know, muesli to actually cook savory style. They actually add salt, then they add chicken floss on top. And this particular customer, I remember she's from Singapore, she eats it every day with chicken floss. Um, she cooks the, the muesli, of course. So you'll find that, you know, product awareness back then was very lacking. So it's always very important for us to build this kind of awareness. And talking about brand awareness and also reach out also, you know, it takes a very long time to build consumers' trust and confidence. This is because, and until to this very day, our Asian mentality is very, very brand conscious. Why I say brand conscious? Let's say if I put yourself, you go to, let's say we go Aeon shopping. You want to buy, um, what is that? Huh? Like the cocoa beverage, something like Milo. If you put a big, Pioneer brand, for example, you know, like Milo, and then you put like an Aeon brand. Which will you pick? You should pick Milo, what? Correct? Because it's actually branded. You, the trust, the confidence is there for you to convince yourself this is a particular brand that I will prefer to drink because I trust the brand. I have confidence in the brand. This was also the main challenge for yogurt at the initial period because no one has heard of yogurt. 
people don't know what yogurt is and when people talk about muesli or muesli bars, they will be thinking to compare us, for example, the big boys, you know, like Kellogg's, Uncle Toby's, Sanitarium. These are really strong international brands compared to us, Kichik Meow, the time, you know, nobody knows about us, you see. And let's not forget, in 2008, 2009, there's no such thing as Facebook ads. There is no YouTube advertisement for you to see. Or there is no online news for you to see as you scroll, 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 suddenly you see an advertisement there like that. You know, back then, there's no online, there's no digital marketing. So it's really 100% purely on physical, offline activations. That's what we call offline activations as in you go to the mall. Only when you go out, you see maybe road shows, you see the product on the shelf or promoter give you a sample to try our product. Or, for example, what we did uh, together with my husband when we were still dating, every weekend, we will always carry our stocks. We will go to places like My Yoga. Back then, My Yoga at the gardens, then you have like celebrity fitness, you have California fitness. I think back, California fitness is when they have Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan as the um, ambassador back then. So, in during that, period fitness was fit, going to fitness going to gym was really very very big thing so that's when we actually spend our weekends you know instead go a park tour go and watch movie we actually take our effort you know we sacrifice the time to really sample let people try because products are really all about trying when you try you taste you know whether you like it or not and that's where you are able to judge how good or how much quality and effort is placed in the product you know so this is also actually one of our ways, you know, to really build the awareness. It really takes years to build. This is not really done in one or two years. For general mindset from consumers, they will always want to, um, how should I say? Uh, they will want to see a particular product in the shelf for at least a few years to know, to, sh to show its stability. Then only customers will have confidence to buy. So I would say that at least it's good that people will know how we have grown so much in terms of the range of products. Then another way is also obstacles such as, you know, sponsorships to increase brand awareness. Prior to the pandemic, we do a lot of sponsorship, uh, mainly to marathons, you know, previously we sponsored maybe like, uh, like Great Eastern Run, there's also the Stan Chart Run, there are some small scale, some large scale runs. So it's really, you know, to give away our muesli bars in the, uh, what do you call it, the collection, the, kit, the race kit pack for consumers to try our products. So all these are ways that we have to really build and break through the brand awareness and for people to instill that kind of confidence. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So the next point is also to curate products. Product curation as in creating products to meet the demand of consumers. You know, being abreast with new emerging health food trends, and the last point I've mentioned earlier, you know, like yogurt being one of the pioneers of no added sugar and salt peanut butter. Throughout our journey, we have created some products that just didn't work out at the end. Like for example, like our muesli bar, we actually created a flavor which is like a green tea, peach and mango flavor. To be honest, I like that flavor. But somehow, you know, we thought green tea should be something Asians were like, Malaysians were like, but it just didn't kickstart. So... You know, we, at the end, we have decided, you know, to drop this flavor and maybe focus on those better selling ones. So curation is to be able to, you know, identify the right product. Because once you identify, you have to develop costs incurred, time, effort, money spent to grow the product. And if after a certain period, you don't see the ROI, of course, it's a bit hard pain. But then again, everything is always a learning curve. You, we can't, I mean, from an entrepreneur point of view, we cannot be successful 100% all the time. There will be times we have to accept failure, but the most important thing is learn from the mistakes, learn from our failure, and don't repeat again. That is the most important thing. So we always learn from mistakes. At least you try better than you're not trying. So this is good for people who have plans you know who have your own vision that you want to grow your own brand these are obstacles that you must be prepared that you will face in the future there will be hits and misses so it's whether you're good enough you know to identify 
products that meets the demand of the market. You can't produce something that it has no demand. No demand means no one will buy. No one will buy means no money. Simple as that. Then we have also the last point, which is also a crucial point called uh, product defects. We have, because of our product for yogurt, right, it's made mostly from natural ingredients and we don't have like nasty chemicals such as preservatives, you know. So, and because of this very factor, our products are very susceptible to infestation. So infestation, for example, like weevils in our product, we have received, you know, on off, I've received complaints, uh, people snap picture, then they let us know, oh, got weevils, you know, that's in our product. So they will think that um, if you have, like, just like rice, sometimes if you don't cook rice after a, a while, you will see weevils, the black insect, correct? But for you, at most, you just, as you rinse, you just wash away and you cook it. But for our muesli, People, when they see, you know, um, weevils, they think it's a serious infestation. But these are actually the same factor, you know, muesli and also rice because they are both natural products. There's no added chemicals and there's, uh, there's no added chemicals and we want it to be as natural as it can be, you know, to preserve it. So sometimes, you know, due to our weather, heat, humidity, external factors from third party, you know, poor handling storage, like for our warehouse, we will definitely keep our products, you know, in a prim and proper manner. But the problem arises is when it leaves our warehouse, when it's dropped, let's say, you know, to distribution points or the, the location where different outlets, you know, they have like the distribution collection center. Our weather is so hot, you know, there are the period where the sun is just so exorbitantly scorching hot. If you leave our muesli bar too long, the yogurt will melt. Then when you open the wrapper, you find that the yogurt sticks, you know, to the wrapper. But all this can be avoided, you know, if it's handled prim and proper. But sometimes, you know, when it comes to these kind of things, it's beyond our control. Because when it's exposed to high heat, poor storage conditions, you know, um, these are the things that we try to avoid. But on off, we still, on off, even to this very day, we still have issues like this. But we try to minimize and of course when customers highlight to us, we'll definitely try to solve it in a, in a more amicable manner. Okay, um, next slide. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Junita, for sharing so much with us. Mm. Um, just a very personal question. Yes. When we listen through the obstacles, it's tough. It's a up and down journey would like to ask, how do you actually cope with all of this? How we actually cope? I would say, don't be afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. Because even there are times where we want to launch something new, I still have that kind of doubt. You know, because it's a new product, you worry whether will it do well, that do you think you'll receive good response or not? But I always tell myself and my team, you know, if you never try, you never know the result. So putting yogurt aside, tell yourself, you know, if next time that if there are products or there are brands that you want to grow or something that you, you want to bring your dream into a reality, you have to start somewhere. And most importantly, you have to trust what you're trying to promote. Without the trust, it's very hard for you to kickstart and it's very hard for you to promote to the next level. How I always tell my team, when you want to sell something, you must entrust the product. You must sell it in a way that you can sell ice to Eskimo, if that ever makes sense. So it's always something, things like this that keep you going. There will always be challenges. Road, the road is never smooth. You, you take the weather, for example, we can never have, you know, uh, um, sunshine all the time. You will have cloudy days, you will have rainy days, but don't ever forget at the end of every storm, there is always a sunshine. Or even if there is a failed campaign that you have executed, even myself, I have executed campaigns or, you know, events that does not meet the ROI or the ROV, the return of value that we are looking at. But at least you always take this as a learning curve, you know, learn from your mistakes and you will never know sometimes from these mistakes you learn, a new opportunity arises. 
Mm. I would say it's always good to be positive. Even on days that are down, this is from my personal um, experience and I'm also like honest sharing. Uh, if, I tell, if I'm very, very down on that day, I give myself a time limit. Okay, until to this day, I will be down. But tomorrow is a new day, new start. I forget whatever happened and I have to start anew. Because if you keep on carrying this kind of negativity, you're going nowhere. The only mm -hmm. way to move is to move forward. What's the point of looking back? There's nothing for you to look back. What? So, of course, you keep on walking, keep on moving, keep on improving. If you want to run your own brand, that is the spirit that you have to keep up. You must have that, that kind of go-getter spirit. Because I'm a person who hardly says no. Even if people say no to me, I'll ask them, why? Why? You know, I, I know I'm annoying, but I need to know why the idea is not accepted. At least perhaps, you know, you listen from a different point of view. Okay, someone gives you this kind of input. If you think that it's valuable, you think that it makes sense, absorb, digest, re-strategize. So, yep, this is something that I can share with everyone here. Wow, thank you. So guys, mm -hmm. remember, don't afraid to be failed. Okay, fail, it's a progress and it might mean there is opportunity at the back. Right, thank you, Junita, for sharing us with the great tips. Thanks, buddy. Okay, mm -hmm. guys, we are going to halftime break and when we come back, we have our part two and part three of today's talk. See you guys later. So for now, we will have our part two. So in part two, Junita will be sharing more about how your good is doing during pandemic and more about future of the your good. Okay, so not least, um, let's not waste more time. So Junita, we all know that pandemic have affected every one of us. Could you share with us more about how your good is doing during um, no pandemic and the impact, how the impact have affected you? Okay, um, if we can go to the next slide. Mm. Okay, um, how Yogurt ha had coped and is still coping because we are in um, EMCO now in Selangor. Mm. Um, okay, we refer to the first point here, you know, brand performance during MCO 1.0. Okay, to be honest, um, first MCO, 
we did very well. Don't say food product. Lah. Toilet paper also go out of stock. Wah. So technically, everyone was doing very well in the FMCG category because panic buying. So you know everything was going off the shelf. Eat, I don't eat, also buy. In case no food, ma. buy, 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 buy. Okay? Then when you start buying already, then it comes to, um, what do you say? MCO, you know, we have the RMCO. That was the later, later, what do you call that? The later period of uh, the year, around July or August. Things have started to relax, correct? That's RMCO period. That's when we realized that sales has started to be stagnant. It's a decline. A decline, not a sharp decline. You see a slight drop compared to previous months, you know, our forecasts. So why the drop is because of all this panic buying, people also started to eat whatever they purchase. So there is no need for them to repurchase again because they have to finish all the existing stock, correct? So there's always, um, how to say, um, this was one of the impact that actually hit us. So we realized that uh, because of this, customers also started to choose in terms of product preference. For example, like Muesli Bar is a hit among to all college students. Uh, it's also very popular to office people who are actually, you know, working and uh, those who are office-based, they don't go out. So people will always snack on our Muesli Bar because it's convenient. But coming to period of RMCO or MCO where most people are at home, people will not tend to buy our Muesli Bar already because they will want to eat something healthy. The muesli bar is mainly as a convenient snack. So like in terms of product preference, we see a drop in the bars, but we see an increase in sales for our muesli range because people feel that, oh, I can start to eat healthily, you know. I eat muesli because it's more wholesome and it is actually more filling to the tummy because if you eat a bowl of muesli, definitely will last you longer than eating one piece of the muesli bar, correct? So a shift of product preference has also changed, um, I would say, the sale category, the sales category for our yogurt range of products. And for yogurt, we have all along been very, very strong in doing a lot of physical events or roadshows. For example, let's say for Jaya Grocer or Village Grocer, when we do roadshow or those concourse right in front of the outlets, right, you will see a lot of them. Uh, they like for yogurt. We will book like the whole place, Pa Sango Chong, to have all our range of products. Because we have so many SKUs, ma, correct or not? But with zero to almost minimal number of events or roadshows, physical eye view is missing. Even if people go and shop their groceries, it's always with a list. Take, 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 take. Go home already. You know they pay, they go home. People don't have the time to really loiter, see one by one. Gone are the days like that already. So. Because of this, because of this, we have to change, you know, strategy to move our marketing approach on a digital basis. Like it or not, I think a lot of brands, be it whether it is in the FMCG, non-FMCG, everyone is geared towards digital marketing. Because like what we are doing now, we are facing our mobile, we are facing our laptop or desktop. And most of the time now, we are actually facing, you know, our digital um, hardware. That's for us, these are our form of entertainment. So we, I have to admit that all this while we have content marketing, but it wasn't that active. But since last year, we started to amplify our presence. So it's a really more of a convincing factor to tell, you know, like my, my husband and my husband really that we have to change our focus. We have all along been strong online. It's time we pick our pace back to the online category because my focus is to be for yogurt to be seen not only offline but also online. Where you see, where you are, you must see yogurt, lah, technically. Okay. So social media platforms such as like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you no, know, we have to amplify all these kind of um, presence to make sure that consumers actually get to see our product so they get to remember us and next time when they go shopping you know for grocery shopping they remember to to purchase our products then you also of course like to have strategies for example like adopting yogurt uh, as an ingredient because every time we eat it as a finished product but 
even during MCO like myself, I've also started to pick up baking. And that's when I realized, actually, we can use our peanut butter as part of baking. What? Why not? You know, this is also indirectly tap tapping into different market segments. So as you can see, like in the photos here, these were like some of the contests that we have done, you know, initially. Uh, we've run, you know, some contests with uh, a very huge Facebook group. Um, they have about 102,000 followers, majority Malaysians. So we kickstart uh, a campaign, you know, with yogurt championing the whole contest, incorporating like our yogurt muesli and uh, our yogurt peanut butter as an ingredient for baking. So as you can see, the first photo here, I need to share this photo and I need to elaborate a little bit further. This photo here, you can see is nasi lemak, correct? But it's not nasi, it's muesli. It's actually, um, this contestant is actually our main winner. She uses our muesli to replace rice. So as you know, when we cook nasi lemak, we will cook the rice with santan. But for this contestant, she actually soaked our muesli with coconut milk kept in the fridge overnight. So as you keep overnight, the muesli will start to absorb moisture. So the next day, it is softer. It's not mushy, but there's still the bite to it, but it's just easy, smoother for you to eat. So at the end, she, you know, she decorate it, you know, with condiments for nasi lemak, like, you know, the timun, you got the sambal, the, the kekacang, uh, you know, you can add in like ayam goreng like that. And she was actually one of the main, the grand prize winner to bring up such innovative dish. And in a way, it's also healthier for you to consume. Some people might not know, when you talk about rice and uh, brown rice, okay? Rice is actually simple carbohydrate, meaning to say that simple carbohydrate means when you eat and it's digested to the body, it breaks down to sugar and this kind of sugar feed your fat. Yes, feed your fat. So if you are looking for more complex carbohydrate, that's why you see people will promote, you know, eating whole grains, eating brown rice because they're higher in dietary fiber. The higher in dietary fiber meaning keeps you fuller longer. And of course, with the husk that's not been grind out right to be to polish to become white, you have all these um, natural vitamins and minerals coated in it. Indirectly will also help to nourish our body. So um, for our range of muesli, we always use uh, a, a variety of muesli, not just purely oats, like our yogurt glow muesli, we have a mixture of five different whole grain, oat, barley, spelt, wheat, and rye. So at least your body, you know, is absorbing different kind of ingredients, you know, at the same time. So it is actually a very wholesome meal. And you can see like the other photos here, how they have actually incorporated our muesli into, you know, different kind of dishes. You have like a chai masala tea with our muesli garnishing. Then you have like our overnight muesli that you can you know consume then you can also do like a pear parfait muesli that looks them at us if you want to impress your date please you can actually go to our website we have all the recipes included for you to go and try out because all these winners you know in return they are very generous to share the recipe on how to curate these kind of innovative dishes then of course you see like you have a peanut butter for our peanut butter especially like the no added sugar and salt the main ingredient is actually just peanut butter. Either you want it to be in crunchy taste or you want it to be smooth, creamy. So you can see sometimes you want to eat roja or you want to eat satay. Satay, you have to have peanut sauce. But instead of grounding your own peanut, use our peanut butter. Go and Google for a recipe and replace that peanut with our peanut butter. It tastes just as good. And the good thing is you are able to control the taste because there's no added salt and sugar. You want more spiciness you are more saltiness or you know more sweetness it's up to you to curate because you are in control of how you want to your dish to be you see so whether it's made into a savory style or made into baking you know like a peanut butter brownies or even like the last photo is actually like a floral cheesecake with the base instead of using digestive biscuit uh, this one is actually my, my creation because i tried to use our muesli i ground it Add melted butter, then you press lah, press into the mold, you know, and you use it as the base crumb for cheesecake. And you'll be surprised that actually, you know, it's a healthier option, you know, because you know what is added inside. So 
it chunks out a lot of idea and I would say the campaign was very successful because we have more than 200 entries, both you know, products combined to make something different. Uh, we're going to go to the next slide. Okay, so we also, I also came up with the idea, like I mentioned, you know, because when I've started baking, that's when I see a lot of YouTube. Then came the idea, okay, let's engage some YouTuber time. So I've actually tried to work with some YouTubers or Malaysians, uh, whether they are Malay content YouTubers, they are Chinese or even English speaking YouTubers. So you can see here, these are the screenshots. So I've actually worked with a few of them. So we know we give them flexibility to curate their own dishes. So as long as it's something that is healthy, something that is doable. So all these um, YouTubers, they are, they are people whom I've actually followed personally myself. So it's good that we try to curate and educate consumers that, um, you know, during this MCO period, there are so many people who is actually becoming home chef, MCO chefs, you know, they have become upgraded their skills in terms of home cooking and all. So we try to leverage and tap onto this opportunity to promote our brand to a different kind of segment. Yeah, okay, next slide. So as you can see just now, the initial slide was mainly on Mandarin and English content. We also tap onto our Malay content because uh, for yogurt products, we also have like the halal logo status. So we also want to promote it, you know, on a different scale. You want to eat apam balik, but cannot go, all right, no problem. Go and see these recipes. You know, we have people that we work with, what Orang Lapa or um, Limau Nipis. These are very popular YouTubers. And then you see how they actually use our peanut butter, you know, to apply as the filling for apam balik or to make, you know, ice cream using five ingredients only with our peanut butter as one of our main ingredients. And also different varieties of flavors making overnight muesli. So we always keep the idea exciting and ongoing. Yep, uh, next slide. Okay, so I can see uh, we've also shift our um, direction, our focus. Like I mentioned, a lot is digital marketing. I want the photos when you see, you want to eat. When you see, oh, wow, I must buy. You know, you must have that wow factor. So photos, of course, have to wow people all. So, you know, and getting lifestyle photographers, you know, to take very curated photos. You see, it, you know, you just feel like eating it. You know, it's good, you know, that kind of thing. So, and of course, it's really to promote our product in a way, how the pro how you can consume uh, our yogurt range of products, not only just on muesli, but you can, like I mentioned, use it for cooking as well. Uh, next slide. Uh, this one will be another uh, set of photos that I'd like to share here as well using our peanut butter and also our crunchy muesli. You know, sometimes it's good that we also want to educate this kind of lifestyle, uh, uh, flat lay style photography, you know, because a picture speaks a thousand words. You don't need to say 1,000 words like myself, very chong hey, that one photo enough to wow people. So we always try to have these kind of um, visuals to entice people and to remember us, you know, on a different scale. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, now, even during the con uh, pandemic, uh, we also feel that for yogurt, it is also good that we give back to the community and also to the society because, um, Things are pretty bad now, like you know, outside. So, and a lot of people, even some of my friends, you know, they have lost their jobs. You know, I'm sure that you've heard a lot of people also that are not doing that well. They're, they're struggling. Um, even the frontliners to this very moment, as we speak, they are also you know working 24 hours around the clock. So, all along we have always been doing a lot of CSR programs, um, even prior to the pandemic. But it's also at this period, we feel that it's also good. We also help to give back the products, you know, give back to give back to society in terms of donation to the, uh, the frontliners. Uh, we also donated, let's say, to uh, mainly like to KPJ or to Sungai Bulo Hospital. We usually don't, you don't see this shout out onto our Facebook page because I don't believe... Um, what you say um, for us to promote so much. But since we're in this talk, so I think that it's good that we let you guys know. 
when one day you are already successful, don't forget those who has ever helped you. So this is, I would say, our indirect way to give back to the community, you know, to help the frontliners, to give them our cheerleading support. You don't need to be there and give them a pat of a shoulder. Sometimes giving a proper product is also another form of saying thank you and showing your appreciation to people. Yep, next slide. Yeah, so these are also like our recent photos that we also share. We also donate to the orphanage, um, you know, because these are also trying times for their people. Um, they, a lot of all these communities, they, um, how should I say, they rely a lot, they rely heavily on donations. So sometimes we also will give back in a form, of, we usually give back in a form of products. So my company, not only we will sponsor yogurt, I think it's also good. We also sponsor like toddlers. Sometimes we give formula milk as well also. This is from our sub, uh, our, another part of our business that we also try to give back to the society in return because um, it's always better to be in a position to give than to take lah, in this situation. So at least we know that we take care and the hashtag kita jaga kita is really ongoing now. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Thank you, Jonita, for mm. sharing that with us. It's very yeah. kind of you good to actually mm. spend some time actually give it back to the community. And we can see that how actually um, your good cope with the pandemic situation from physical slowly go up to digital. Thank you for sharing all that with us. Yes. So now, mm. a little bit more towards the future. So could you share with us more about the future of your good? Okay, um, the next slide, please. Okay. Future of your good. Must continue to survive, law. <laughs> okay, I did that <laughs> confirm already. <laughs> um, basically, for us, it's really to continue improving our product offerings and to be innovative, uh, bringing exciting new products in the market. So like I mentioned in our earlier slides, um, obstacles of founding um, yogurt, um, you have to be in tune, you know, with the upcoming trends, food trends, healthy food trends, uh, since this is what our whole vision is all about in the very beginning. So um, every year, you know, we always try to in, uh, introduce one or two new products like this year we've already introduced the yogurt junior vegetable pasta and also um, the classic peanut butter range so we always try to be creative having consumers who have different products to try all the time so innovation is definitely our key thing that's how we always progress the learning never stops and um, it's always good that we keep on moving forward and also, the next point is um, definitely we will want to grow in terms of... Hey, this one, later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, in terms of uh, expanding the yogurt, uh, our organic category, our yogurt grow, this is definitely also in our key pipeline um, to, to, how to say, to, to expand this organic health food category. Like for now, we have our kids range. Who knows, maybe in the future, we might have an organic adult range. I mean, it's good to hear some mm. feedback from you guys because it, like you all have been supporting our product. So at least we want to know what, you know, are your likes and all. So at least we can slowly improvise and, you know, develop something new and innovative then. Mm. And uh, next slide, please. Mm. Okay, this one, no surprise already. But I also can share. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we bring this, um, what do you call that, uh, this talk to an end, uh, to the lucky draw, I have two good news to share. First is, of course, to share in terms of our collaboration with SAGI University Group of Colleges. Um, having this live talk will be our very first collaboration together. Then uh, moving forward, we will also be having, for example, uh, like endorsement or involvement of yogurt into your subjects or even syllabus in SAGI group of colleges. You know, maybe, for example, uh, uh, maybe with your design faculty, maybe we can run like an assignment or campaign, you know, to, to promote or how to design uh, yogurt products. And who knows, perhaps your product 
it really, really has that wow factor we can actually incorporate into our new facelift, you know, of our products. I mean, we'll never know because all these are still in talks. In future, we will also have um, entrepreneurial talks. Like now, of course, we're touching on the surface, but I think when we are able to visit your colleges one day, I always prefer a face-to-face -face communication rather than just the screen line. No? So Entrepreneur Talks is really giving more business insight, more in-depth how to grow yourself, not only, let's say, as an employee or perhaps next time you're going to be an entrepreneur in future, what are the do's and don'ts or how should you go bring yourself forward to the next level, you see? Then you also have, you know, maybe Yogurt's ambassador program, mini challenges or competitions, you know, in the coming, in the coming campaigns. Uh. So hopefully we will hear more good news. Uh. Um, yeah. yeah. Then last yeah. but not least, the last slide. Okay. This is um, a very small thank mm -hmm. you um, and appreciation to everyone here who has actually attended our talk. Um, for you know as a as a thank you gift uh, in return we want to share uh, this promo code yogo seg15 if you go into our official uh, yogurt store on shopee you actually can get to enjoy 15 percent off with a purchase of 50 ringgit and above so this is applicable to all yogurt range of products this is open to all uh, so um it's only valid starting from now, today, until 20th. So it should be a next Wednesday, I think. Yeah. So it's, but this voucher runs very limited. It's on a first come, first serve basis. But do remember this voucher code is only applicable for our official store in Shopee, not Lazada. Because, um, I don't know, somehow got problem. Lah. I don't know why. <laughs> so you just buy from Shopee. Lah. So um, just remember this, you know, this, um, what do you call that? Um, the promo code YOGO SEG15. Feel free to shop away. You know, uh, whatever range that I've shown earlier, you definitely can find it on our official store for you to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Junita. So I know we must have a lot of pandemic born master chef. Guys, it's your time to be shine. So get up there and get some ingredients and start cooking. So. <laughs> Get on to it. And now, okay, the most exciting session is here. Q&A session and the lucky draw session. Okay, so do you guys still remember what to do? Oh, before that, let just let me to repeat again what do we have for today, a lucky draw. So we are giving out three sets of your good products that you see on the screen. Okay, so what you have to do is that if you see your name pop up later on, Remember to comment, I am the winner, so that you can claim your prize, okay? Now, um, should we go? Oh, right. So before we go into that, a little um, sharing with you guys. So for our next webinar series, we, have, we are very happy to be able to invite Mr. Gary Chow from Nikon. Um, he is also a award-winning photographer to share with us about the art of night photography. Mark your calendar, 21st July. 21st July, 8 p.m. Okay, mark your calendar. We'll see you there. Okay, come on. <laughs> Let's go on. Move on. And then that's a wheel of name. Okay, let's see who's our lucky winner. Yay, we have our first winner, Ho Tian Sin. Okay, if you can see your name, remember to comment, I am the winner, and you have one minute time. Okay, so while waiting, let's go into our first Q&A session. Okay, so there's a question here. If you were to start all over again, with your experience now, what would you do differently in terms of getting your name out there? especially when going against big pioneer parents? If I were to start all over again, for us, if I were to start all over again, I will not change what we're, we are doing, actually, in, in terms of like the strategy, the growth, the pace that we are going at now. Um, for me, there's no point in rushing. 
So like I mentioned, mm -hmm. it takes years to build the trust and confidence of our yogurt brand. If you're expecting to grow a brand and to be well-known in one, year's, one to two years' time, the likelihood for you to crash is also very high. Why? Because if you want to build your name to such upscale level in a short period of time, right? You are talking about huge amount of marketing investment. You know, investment in terms of AMP, you know, advertising and promotion to market yourself, and all these unchip. Like for us to work with agencies, you know, to do advertising. You know, you are talking about web banners and all all these gong qin yeah. <laughs> so it is very expensive. Um. For us, we try to spend prudently. And I would say the key factor is, um, what's that term you call it? Uh? Um, I can't recall that face, you know. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. Yep, that's what I try to say. Don't rush for success because even to this very day, it is still a learning journey for us. So... Let's say if you know that you've adopted a strategy that works, you can apply it or even enhance it to be even better. But sometimes there are also times maybe strategy that you've used, you've used, you know, maybe three, four years ago and you adopt it to this very day, it might not work. So you have to be really hands-on. That, that's something that I also need to be very, uh, I really need to bring it up further. Like for example, for us, when we have road shows at the physical stores, of course, it's handled by my sales team. But sometimes, let's say when we exhibit at Baby Fair, we also have like a yogurt booth. I will always ensure that I'm with my team at all times because it's very important as an entrepreneur, you are also a leader. When you are a leader, you must be able to lead a team and to show an example. Always be a leader to guide, show an example, teach and correct when necessary. And I trust that, you know, with all this guidance and all, the brand will definitely grow slowly and steadily. Right. Thank you, Jonita, for that mm. saying, slow and steady win the race. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I saw our first winner comment. So congratulations. So products go to you. So let's go for our second winner for today. So let's the win spin. Um, who's the second winner? Yay! We have Alicia Lee. So you have one minute mm. to comment in the comment box saying that I am the winner. Thank you. So second question here. So if you are stuck in an abandoned island, what is the one yogurt product you would bring? <sighs> <laughs> Why only one? <laughs> if I can get choose to be stuck on the island, of course I bring one suitcase, right? Okay, <laughs> la, no, la. Putting aside, la. let's say if I'm really, really stuck. La. Ah, this is tough, man. I'll bring the peanut butter. Hmm. Because uh, easy to eat. You, I assume that there's no water, la, you know? Okay, so like if I eat my muesli, sometimes it's a bit inconvenient. Ma. I cannot take muesli bar because muesli bar only has six in it. Only what? So, I take peanut butter because even to this very day, like uh, I, I do, let's like, say, like workouts in the morning. After my workout, I always take high protein food, not those mixed, mixed type, man. I, as in really proper high protein food. It's always, my staple is always two eggs, one avocado, two slices of wholemeal bread with peanut butter, fix, uh, mm. and a cup of coffee, of course. So even the peanut butter, sometimes, like if I'm hungry or I'm just feeling peckish, I will take a spoon, you know, just scoop peanut butter and I just eat it from the spoon. I think that's the best way to eat peanut butter, like if you ask me. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's uh, the crunchy or the creamy texture. That's how I eat it. That's how my kids eat it as well also. Mm, thank mm. you for that. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. So, um, yeah, we see our second winner. Thank you for being there. Okay, let's see our third winner. Who's our third winner? Let it spin. Dun dun. Oh, yay! We have Ki and Ping for our third winner. So if you are here, can you please comment, I am the winner, and you have one minute. So our third question. Okay, Yogurt has such wide range of products. What other factors um, influence the design process for curating new products other than consumer demands? Mm, 
factors. Hmm. I, I am very uh, um, in tune with this kind of new designs, but mm -hmm. somehow um, I don't like designs that are very, we call it like loud and noisy. It means you have too many elements. Hence, you notice that our yogurt products only have a white background and mm -hmm. only a white background. I will explain why Kitsan has colors lah, then mm -hmm. later. So adult range always have white because we go with simplicity, mm. clean, minimalist look. Because when you have too many colors, too many elements on the product, how is customer going to focus on the product? You know, like we take picture of the muesli. When people take your product, people want to see what's available. So when people see, it should be the product, actual product itself that captures their interest. And of course, the overall design complements the whole look. So even to this day, let's say if you were to walk to the cereal aisle, I'm very sure from a, if you were to stand one end, you can immediately identify your goods range because of its white background. Clean, simple, minimalist, minimalist look. But then mm -hmm. again, this, is, this has always been your goods direction, you know. So if let's say next time you want to create your own prof your own identity, feel free. You can it can be a colored background. I mean it's up to you, but you when you create something and when there are new range of products lining up, you know, one after another, like our products, you have to ensure that there is a standardization. You can't have suddenly white and then suddenly, you know, colorful. You no, know, it's a bit different, you see, unless you want that item to really stand out of the box. Now, for children's range, why it's colourful? Because when it comes to children's product, should we have, I mean, we've done like studies before. So children are always very attracted to colourful things. So hence, you will see that children's product is not plain, not clean. They won't understand that kind of concept. It's not like adults, you know. You, you see kids' product is always colourful. It's always illustrated. Not really much of a real product. You still see on the design of the packaging, but it's always something very cheeky very fun to be with you know so we even use like animal characters you know to to represent the product you see mm -hmm. all right yeah. thank you for that so we have our third winner so congratulations guys so for all the winners um look on the screen so you will see that is an email that you can email to okay please email your current address to that email and please identify yourself as well okay Okay, guys, it appeared the second time, so it is important. Screenshot it. 21st July, we have Gary Chow for the art of night photography. Okay, so before we end, Miss Junita, could you say a few last words to our young audience today? Mm, last few words. Um, I would say, as of now, um, if you have a plan or if you have a dream, that should be the correct word, you know, don't give up. Even if you cannot execute it in the near future, always have that passion, you know, that pride uh, that you will be able to grow it one day. Perhaps um, it will be very, very challenging at the beginning. I mean, no, there's no story that comes, you know, with a, a smooth start, you know. Cinderella didn't got off very nice at the beginning anyway. So um, always persevere. Um, how to say? The key factor, like I mentioned earlier, don't take failures as failure, but rather it's more of like an encouragement to yourself. At least you try better than not trying. So this is something that I've always tell myself. Disappointment will kick in Sometimes people will shun your products. When you want to grow your own brand, you're bound to receive some negative, very nasty remarks at times that will really hurt your feelings, you know, in the initial period. But learn to get over it. Don't let this kind of negativity stop you or hinder you from something successful, you know. If you believe in it, and believing is one crucial factor to make your brand to grow to the next milestone. Believing it, like I mentioned, to trust your product. If you yourself trust your product will do well, it will do well. And patience as well to slowly grow, analyze and study the market. 
study your brand, study your competitors. Observe how other people progress. Even if it's not a competitor, look at how other industries are growing. Sometimes you will never know a strategy adopted from a different industry can also um, be adopted to what you're doing now. You never know. It's really all about brainstorming. And like I mentioned, you know, always keep the passion and the fire going. That's how we always learn. That's how we always improvise. If you fall down, get up again. You fall, get up again. That is the main thing that I would like to share with everyone. And um, last but not least, this is non-yogurt related. You know, looking at the current COVID numbers now, I just want to wish everyone here, you know, stay safe. Kita jaga kita, you know, practice good SOP. Um, we really need to do our part now because um, we are really at the juncture uh, where it's really at the breaking point. So everyone, as long as we do our part, I'm sure that we can really break the chain and hopefully get life to where it's supposed to be, you know, like how it used to. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Thank you, Ms. Janita, for sharing that with us. So people, I think we all can learn something from here. So guys, this is the end of our talk. So Ms. Junita, thank you for spending your time with us. Thank you thank for you. sharing all this insightful knowledge and your experiences. I think all of us can learn something from it. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Um, thank you to Sagi College, Group of Colleges once again, you know, for the opportunity. Uh, it's been very honor. At least I get to, you know, have this kind of live session, you know. And thank you for all the overwhelming comments. As I'm speaking, I'm also looking at your comments. You know, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been a pleasure as well to share our insight. And hopefully, you know, Sagi can come up more of these kind of educational talks because sometimes it's not really by the books. It's good to mm -hmm. have this kind of practical, uh, on ground. Uh, uh, sharing, you know, from different kind of business sectors, you see, for them to mm -hmm. share their knowledge and insights. Yeah, thank you. So to our audience, thank you as well for choosing to tune in with us today. So I hope our talk today will enrich your perspective in some of the way. Okay, so guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in our next webinar, 21st July, don't forget about it. Okay, and good night. Bye, guys. <laughs>